This is a continuation of one method of dealing with percussion nipples and revolvers that uh, seem to have a mind of their own when it comes to being removed. They may be rusted in or just over tightened. If they've been worked on unsuccessfully before, they may have rounded edges making normal methods um, difficult, if not impossible, including the one that I've shown. Okay, so talking about the nipple wrench, um, fit is very critical unless you're planning on drilling them out. Uh, drilling them out is described in forms, but I don't recall reading anything about what happens if the nipples are hardened, and some are, especially on the newer gun. The nipple has a flat spot on, on it where the wrench fits over it, and that isn't very deep, so any crud that's built up down inside that area where the nipple rides, um, you need to get that out of there. Get it removed as much as you can so that the wrench can fit down as far as it can on the nipple so it can be used to a full advantage. Most cylinders have a recess uh, that the base of the nipple fits into and the wrench needs to be small enough to fit into that recess. The reason for this is so that the wrench can have full access to the flat on the nipple. This recess measures about 76 thousandths deep. And the nipple base is around 46 thousandths, so it'll go down some extra distance and we'll miss about 30 thousandths of our grip if the nipple wrench can't fit into that recess. That recess is a diameter of about 0.338, so that would be the maximum width for that part of the wrench. So if the wrench is much smaller, it'll decrease the strength uh, of the ears, um, allowing them to bend, making it easier for the wrench to slip off the nipples. Uh, I have one that I made that has the correct barrel diameter, but has the ears flare back some, uh, making it unable to fit into that recess. It still works, but uh, I wouldn't want to use it on tough jobs. It's not real noticeable, but if this section that fits the nipple happens to get bent out, it won't fit into the recess, and it'll also have a tendency to rise up and uh, round the nipple corners. The wrench needs to be as square as possible to make a close fit to the sides of the nipples. Because the sides of the wrench are so thin so they can fit into the space where the nipple is located, they can bend out if they're made of soft metal and won't be able to keep on the nipple even if large amounts of pressure are applied. Here's what it looks like using my wrench with the uh, side slightly flared out. There's an excess movement and the wrench has a tendency to rise up and off the nipple, rounding the corners, making it that much more difficult to remove. Same thing can happen when using a crescent wrench. Set a little wide. Once the corners are turned, when the wrench slips, you'll probably be looking at a new removal method. Here's a cylinder from a 1980s gun that hasn't had a lot of TLC and the first nipple showed a lot of rust but came out without too much of a battle. The rest weren't too bad but still need to be removed and oiled. Slick shot nipples have a slightly thicker, about 20 thousandths base, which I feel is an advantage if your wrench doesn't quite fit into the recess. With this thicker base, the wrench will get a full grip without having to fit into that recess and therefore can allow for a slightly thicker size or ears on the, on the tool. Thing is that these are an upgrade and you'll need to be able to remove the old ones first. I have a link in the description to a video where I show a method I've been using for nipples that need some extra persuasion, it's been working pretty good so far. I'm sure there are situations where I'll need to resort to something else. As always, thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed the video. And remember to always check to be sure guns and cylinders aren't loaded when working on them. And even if doing so, make it a habit to treat them as though they are.